you know, I, I, I always reflect on being here, how, how fortunate it is for all of you to be contributing to this space and all of the people who have gone before you who have uh, helped build up this, build up uh, BSV into what it is and uh, uh, as, a safe, as a safe haven and refuge for people to come and listen to Dhamma and practice Dhamma and, uh, and inquire, ask questions about Dhamma. So very, uh, very noble enterprise, I would say. Just a little quotation here from, uh, from the Sangyutta Nikaya. This is Bahia asking a question of the, the Buddha. Venerable Sir, it would be good if the Blessed One would teach me the Dhamma in brief, so that having heard the Dhamma from the Blessed One, I might dwell alone, withdrawn, diligent, ardent, and resolute. Well then, Bahia, purify the very starting point of wholesome states. And what is the starting point of wholesome states? Virtue that is well purified and view that is straight. Then, Bahia, when your virtue is well purified and your view is straight, based on virtue, established on virtue, you should develop the four establishments of mindfulness, the four foundations of mindfulness. So that's, um, you've just taken the five precepts and um, maybe I'll, I'll say a, a few words about, about our view of practice and, um, and then we can, we, we can begin. Is anyone here brand new to meditation practice? Anyone need? No? So you've all had some instruction. So in a sense, you know why you're here. I guess you, you've, um, for some time in the past, maybe many years, you've, uh, you've decided that, that meditation is a good thing to pursue, to understand, to, to practice. So in a way, you have your own view of, of what it is that brings you to this place. So I'll just ask, uh, I'll just really um, uh, think of a few things, a few reminders really um, about the importance of practice and its place in our lives and, and how, it, uh, how it can be arranged. <coughs> Of course, the view that the, the Buddha speaks of uh, can be encapsulated into the Eightfold Path. Right view, right thought or intention, right speech, action, livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. And um, as with all of the Dhamma, you know, in a sense, uh, uh, this comprise, com comprises a, um, um, a series of ideas, a series of, of thoughts in a certain order to keep in mind. And uh, we quite rightfully need and use our intellect, our mind, our memories to, to hold Dhamma as we practice it and as we go about our lives in the day, in each day. We need to remember too that view also entails uh, the the establishment of uh, of the heart uh, in a in an open and uh, kindly manner. This is expressed in part through uh, our commitment to the virtue. And it's cultivated uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in an important way, an ongoing way, hopefully a daily way. It's cultivated by contemplating the importance of metta, karuna. So cultivating a, a heart of loving kindness, uh, a compassionate heart, uh, a heart which is uh, gladdened by the sight of the, the, the sharing of, of, of um, well-being of, from other people. So 
So the heart, which is alive to the benefit of others and, and, to our, and to the benefit of ourselves, to the well-being, the health, the safety, the happiness, the, the joy, the contentment of ourselves and others. This too uh, has a lot to say uh, with regards to right view. And in, uh, in beginning a, a day's practice such as we're doing now, it's important, um, very valuable to, to, um, to comport ourselves in this kind of manner. Um, not only a, with, a, with a lovely perspective a, aligned with the truth as best we can, but also in a, in a loving manner. So we think of sitting in this space and um, arranging the body in as comfortable a way and stable a manner as we can so that it's uh, likely that we, can, that we can remain as still as possible for, for a good long time. Not trying to maintain a, a kind of a, a principled position, but just finding finding the right balance in, in your posture, if possible, without a, without uh, supporting your back, but just uh, holding it erect on its own, and uh, arranging the legs as they need to be. And we're sitting in this room, and as I say, we're we're in this space that's been developed by all kinds of good intentions, by dozens and hundreds of people over the years. And uh, just think of wishing yourself well. We've got this few hours ahead of us. Soften the heart. Reflect with gratitude on being here. What it is that's brought you here. Um, the conditions of your life that, that you have arranged yourself through your own good efforts and others have, have uh, supported you in doing to enable you to be here. You think of the, the friends and, and the people around you, may they be well and happy, may they be peaceful, May we find benefit in this day's practice. May we experience peace and contentment, some insight, increased clarity. Through the development of the heart and mind. May all beings in this vicinity, whether large or small, may all beings be well, peaceful, happy. May no harm come to them. May no difficulties come to them. May they always meet with success. The cultivation of loving kindness in this manner does, as you can, I think, feel now, uh, relax the body uh, in a way which is very useful for practice. The body itself becomes a more comfortable place to live. When the body is a little more comfortable in this way, relaxed, feeling safe and just kind of content, then the mind uh, uh, 
is not so prone to distraction or finding release from the discomfort of the body. And so the rising and falling, the inhaling and exhaling of the breath becomes an easier thing to attend to. Breath is very uh, vital in in practice. It's of course not the only uh, focus of practice in meditation, but for most most of us it's uh, um, the most common. Very subtle in its own way. Goes on all the time, except when we're underwater. (laughs) Goes on all the time and yet all uh, occurs mostly uh, without our noticing it. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's shallow, sometimes it's deep, sometimes it's slow. It's cool coming in the nose, warm leaving the nose. Sometimes we inhale and then there's a pause and then we exhale and there's a pause. Sometimes there isn't much of a pause on either end of it. Sometimes the inhalation is a little longer than the exhalation, vice versa. And all the while, uh, this breath is integral to our continued living. So it can, with good reason, be a, a point of great interest. And in, if it isn't, or when it isn't, um, the discipline, the gentle discipline of, of meditation then is drawing the attention back to the breath. First of all, noticing that the attention has become distracted, moved away, d- drifted off, wandered off to the sound of the vehicles or to your own thoughts, to some sensation. So first of all, noticing that, that's when mindfulness is, is being is, is reestablished and then bringing the mind back to the breath, just returning it again and again. Returning it with patience, without expectation that it should be otherwise. The mind is quite blameless in, in its habits because they are its habits. It'll do what it does. But in the midst of that, in our, in our practice of meditation, in this cultivation of bhavana, what we have this opportunity to do is begin to strengthen, to, to discipline, to, to alert the mind to its, its nature, and to return it to um, experiences of our choosing. Thank <laughs> you.
you've been sitting for a good while now, you might want to change posture a bit or just uh, review the body. Seemed like a very peaceful group this morning. So in that um, brief passage from, uh, from the Sangyutta with uh, Venerable Bahia and uh, the Buddha, the Buddha spoke of the, or just mentioned the uh, four foundations of mindfulness, and uh, it's perhaps a good time just to review these here, since that's what we are uh, largely uh, engaged with in this kind of practice. First foundation of mindfulness is the body, and uh, this can be quite involved. But uh, basically, it begins with just knowing knowing w w that the body is sitting, feeling the the kind of solidity of the body. This is the earth element, especially in the seated posture. So bringing uh, attention back to the body quite regularly, even uh, uh, every, especially if the, if the mind has wandered off uh, and you've noticed it, bring it back to the body. Once again, you know, feel the spine, maybe open the shoulders up a little bit, uh, see if there's any tension in the, in the neck. Um, uh, are your hands clasped and, and somehow tight? Can they be relaxed? Uh, that, that kind of thing just brings the, brings the attention again and again uh, to the body. And uh, as my teachers often would remind me, the body doesn't proliferate. It's the mind that gets spinning in this direction and that direction. The sound of a car reminds us of that, that we need to take the car in next Tuesday to get uh, to get the brakes checked, which reminds us of, of uh, how much money it costs, which reminds us of just on and on and on. And before we know it, we're on the other side of the universe, uh, um, thinking about uh, stellar stellar systems or or uh, gravitational impact on Jupiter's moons or something. I mean, we're just uh, the mind just has no particular reason to stay put anywhere. <coughs> I, I notice this in myself regularly when I when I have to lead chanting because I don't lead chanting that much, and uh, so the chants that I know perfectly well, having done them a few thousand times, I'm struggling to, because my mind, you know, if I'm leading, I'm, I'm it, it's wanting to think, oh, what do I have to say now? Should I talk a little about this and that? And meanwhile, I'm trying to lead the chanting. <laughs> it's it's kind of humorous in its own embarrassing way. So we tend to the body, and it's it's uh, it registers it registers our experience in a truthful way. This is a, a a lovely thing about the body too. It's a it's a kind of honest register of our experience. And so people, some of you who may have um, uh, practiced maybe for years uh, yoga or tai chi or qigong or, um, or or are just devoted to some form of physical exercise. Um, and in particular things like yoga and qigong, because um, um, the, the, the kind of energies of the body and um, the, the way it can tighten in certain ways and the result and, and 
how that tightness sometimes will, when it's, when it's released and unlocked, will actually release a series of, of uh, emotions or memories at times. People often speak of, of uh, yoga in, in this light, for, for example. So there's a great deal of, of um, kind of wisdom that r- sort of resides in the body or, or <clears throat> is contained in it. And if we just sit with it, watch it, using the breath as this kind of medium, um, uh, it, it has a lot to say to us. It's very truthful and important. And it's a foundation. It's a foundation for mindfulness. This is how mindfulness uh, becomes established. Second foundation of mindfulness is uh, sensations, Vedna and Upasana. So, um, um, we see we see the rising of pain, for instance, and uh, it rises. It's sustained for a time, and it subsides. People who have to deal with uh, sometimes a great deal of pain, chronic pain, uh, if and people who report about this sometimes, if. Uh, if it isn't purely a kind of traumatic, uh, uh, um, torturous kind of thing, uh, what they will sometimes report is that uh, uh, even pain, you know, it doesn't stay the same. There's, a, 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 for one thing, it has a different character. Sometimes it's maybe jagged or piercing or, or throbbing or yeah, it has. We can apply these kinds of words to it because it has different qualities to it, but also it 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 just can't be sustained. Nothing has it in itself to remain the same. Impermanence, of course, is a characteristic of existence. And so it will subside and it will maybe rise, take a different form. But um, um, So there's pain, there's itches, there's, there's uh, just this and that that occurs with sensation. Pleasant, painful, and neutral. Chitta anapasana, the the third uh, foundation of mindfulness, can be sometimes described as kind of a, a, a mood or emotion. So this is more subtle. Um, sometimes it's quite obvious when you wake up in the day that oh, I'm in a feeling kind of irritable, kind of grumpy, or kind of kind of down, dispirited, depressed or uh, really bouncy, you know, there's a kind of buoyancy. Uh, we don't always notice these things uh, uh, too quickly, if at all, but uh, it, it is kind of interesting. There's this, there's this sort of subtext, uh, which to some degree informs much of our, of our experience, much of the experience that comes out of it. Particularly, it's noticeable if you're irritable. This thing bothers you, and your husband or your wife said this, and that's kind of uh, grating, and you're having to hold your tongue a little bit and uh, just kind of focus on what you're doing because uh, other things are intruding and I- impacting and, and uh, uh, um, are unpleasant, uh, unpleasant experiences. Sometimes there is, on the other hand, this kind of lightness and um, uh, the mind uh, picks up things in a more gentle and, and loving or light kind of way. Humor comes uh, more, more quickly to the mind, for example. In meditation, we're, we're, um, we're not um, experiencing things in that kind of way. We're not, we're not going through our day and speaking with our spouse, for instance. But we can notice uh, qualities of the mind arise and pass. The fourth foundation, Dhamma, these are sometimes described as mind objects. Um, they, uh, in, in the literature, they are described as, uh, for instance, knowing uh, which uh, of the hindrances is present, the five hindrances. 
And then when it becomes more subtle, uh, 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 being able to have a kind of assessment of, of uh, what's occurring in the mind. So uh, is, there, is there the presence of, of, of uh, joy, of, of clarity? Uh, for instance, the seven factors of awakening. Now, um, it can be a, um, a kind of habit of ours as, as ambitious kinds of human beings wanting more or wanting to be better, wanting, wanting to have more, that um, there being four of these, and uh, even in the way I've described them, it seems that the fourth is, is the most subtle. Maybe it has more to do with wisdom. So you want to go right. You want to go right to number four. You know, why start with grade one if you can go right to grade four and you skip a lot of steps? You know, because it's so tedious uh, going right through everything. Just go right to number four. But these are uh, foundations of mindfulness in the same way that. A building with multi stories has um, you need the ground floor because if you don't if it if it's not there the other ones don't stay uh, they fall down come crashing down so uh, it, it it lacks integrity in other words experience of meditation lacks integrity if if we if we're using the mind uh, as a means to grasp uh, what it is that we're looking for what we're trying to accomplish is as lumper um said or wrote some time ago, but I wrote it down many years ago. Um, only wisdom can see desire. Desire cannot see wisdom. So we have to have things in the proper order. Uh, there has to be an integrity at the heart of our practice. And uh, in in the Satipatthana, this begins by it begins with the body. When the foundation of mindfulness on body is is uh, well established, then uh, the the second, the third, the fourth, they begin to 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 speak to experience as objects of mindfulness, not just as thoughts coming and going or or uh, um, thoughts that are that are. Um, uh, contain the desire for enlightenment or, or wisdom or to be better meditators, but they just arise um, as uh, proper subjects of, of mindfulness. But you'll know, you'll know, uh, you'll know the difference. We, we do experience the difference. When the first foundation of mindfulness is, is, is is calm, is established, is steady, stable, and is somehow also buoyant and, you know, it has life to it, but we, we, we can feel the body, we can see the breath clearly. We're not looking for anything else, we're not grasping beyond that. And then a certain kind of thought arises, we can, we can see its character, we can feel it, and then watch it fall away. We're not grasping after the thought, that reminds me of this, that reminds me of this, this reminds me of that. But rather, thoughts, for instance, arise and, and pass away. We see their character, we, we can discern something of their character in a way that is not normally available to us. When sensations arise, we don't grasp after them. We don't like this one and dislike that one. We don't try to get away from this and grasp after that, get more of it. Rather, sensations in their, in their character, their texture, they arise and uh, we, can, we can see them for a time and they pass away. the moods of the mind, the, the, the kind of quality of the mind in general. Again, it, it, it's not something w that we try to avoid, to grasp after, or to work with. We just, we note it, we feel its texture, its character, its quality, its coloration, whatever, uh, whatever metaphor you like to put to it. So, so don't think then by, by focusing, just watching the body and it's kind of, <laughs> it's, it's kind of uh, 
just ongoing muteness, you know, it's just the body, this earthiness of the body. You needn't have to think that, that, that you want to get beyond this. You're not trying to get to the second stage. or the, These aren't stages in that sense. Because uh, uh, being very honest and truthful, mindful, careful, loving, regarding the, the body's experience from one moment to the next, this is establishing without your necessarily willing and wanting it, but it is establishing a foundation upon which mindfulness can deepen and develop and become more clear. And of course, while all of this is occurring, um, because we often think of satis, samadhi as kind of different things, and but while, while this is occurring, and in order for it to occur, this particular establishment of mindfulness, samadhi, uh, concentration, or the, 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 the one-pointedness, the focus, the stability of the mind, this is also occurring. They have to occur in tandem. So we don't need to worry about, you know, getting this factor and then that factor and, and judging them and, and, and the rest of it. They occur just owing to our momentary, you know, moment by moment, watching the breath. Noticing the breath, being aware of the, the posture, and so forth. Well, if we can find space to do some walking meditation, we'll uh, maybe have uh, 30 minutes of walking prior to the meal. Um, some, of course, can walk in here if you take short distances. And, uh, and then, of course, there's, there's a, a space outside along this sidewalk here and then behind the, uh, behind the other building there. Um, something to draw your attention to <clears throat> for the rest of the day. Um, when, when transitions occur, they can be incorporated into the practice. So, um, you know, you hear the bell and now it's walking time. Kind of think about how you're going to get up slowly and, and w with mindfulness. So you think about your body, oh yeah, I'm here. Uh, standing up isn't in order to begin meditating again, in other words. Uh, the whole movement, the whole process of, of uh, taking, taking, you know, getting to your feet can be incorporated into the practice, but you need to kind of plan it a little bit. Okay, I'll, I, I need to uh, shift my balance this way and my hand goes here and uh, draw one of my legs out in this way and then get my foot under here and then slowly stand. And in that way, you haven't, uh, as much as is possible, you really haven't disrupted the practice at all. Same when you come into the room and then you, you come to your, your seat and you stand there for a moment and then you slowly uh, um, settle down and, and you know, move your legs in, in whichever way you need to, to sit comfortably. It's very useful to think of transitions as, how can I make this transition part of the practice? So when you see Tai Chi done in that, you know, you kind of, 
kind of internalize that beautiful grace that uh, that people embody when they've learned that. But we can we can do a similar kind of thing in in, in this practice as well. So. Um, Walking practice, of course, uh, walking meditation is one of the four, four forms of, 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 uh, of satipatthana. And um, typically it's done more slowly than we, we normally walk, remembering we're not trying to get anywhere, <laughs> just trying to, we're moving the body in a, in a, in a useful way. And, um, and therefore mindfulness has very different objects to, to observe. Uh, it may be the sensation of one foot, then the next foot uh, as it as it's placed on the ground. Um, it might be uh, the 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 way the the uh, back or the where the hips or the shoulders are are adjusting with each step. You can't attend to it all because so much is occurring when you're walking. It's pretty amazing what our bodies do just to keep. You know, to, to obey gravity and uh, and uh, to to move in a forward position in a forward direction. Similarly, uh, in walking meditation, you come to the end of a you know a short path, you stop, and uh, just as I was saying with getting up, you're not trying to turn around quickly so that you can start walking again. No the stopping, the standing, the, the, the turning are all part of the walking meditation. So just kind of cons- remember, consider your practice in this light. Um, you're not trying to get anywhere and um, uh, the in-between things are, are very much part of, the, uh, of this practice. So we'll, uh, we have about a half an hour for that and then of course the uh, meal takes place at 11 o'clock. So.